Welcome back to the channel. There are so many things to do and so little time to do them. In this video, I'm going to start restoring this bandsaw. Now I bought this bandsaw quite a while ago now and I've had a whole bunch of other things to do that I didn't get time to work on it. Now the bandsaw does work but you can probably see there are some rusty bits all over the place and I'll need to check out the bearings and the wheels and things like that. And I also want to make a base for it with some wheels on it so it can be moved around easy and stored out of the way. I'll drag it out of here and we'll see what we're up against. My friend Gordon has come over again to help out and he starts by removing the belt and pulley cover. Next we move on to the table so that's removed. and the table tilting mechanisms removed then we remove the bandsaw from the base and this top of the bandsaw is very very heavy it's all cast iron once the bandsaw is removed from the base we remove these rungy wheels that were put on the bandsaw Okay, so we pulled off those horrible wheels and this is the mock-up that my friend Gordon has come up with. So I bought these swivel wheels that we can put in the front and they have brakes on them and then just some fixed wheels at the back there. And this steel here is, I think it's 10 millimeter steel and that was given to me by someone at the Woodturners Club. It apparently comes in some crate as a counterweight or something and they normally just throw it away. So. That's a bit of a bonus. So anyway, I'll get the Apprentice Gordon onto this and we'll get it all cut up, welded together and put on. We start by cutting this flat piece of steel to length. We're grinding in some chamfers here so that we can get a good weld when we weld it together. Everything's all clamped down, ready for welding, and it looks like Gordon is having a few issues here. A little bit out of practice, I think. Oh, there we go, we got started. All those joints are welded up together, nice and secure. Now we're marking out the hole placement so that these wheels can be bolted on. Those are all center punched. Then we're off to the drill press and they're all drilled out. We've lined up the new base onto the existing base and now we're working out where to mark the holes that will mount this new base onto the existing base. Those holes are then drilled out right through the new base and the existing base. Just so I can orientate this back to how it is now, I stamp a F here for front. I'm test fitting by bolting these two bases together. And I also bolt the wheels on to test fit those as well. I notice that it's hitting on the bolt here, so I just have to shorten those bolts down a bit. So that works quite nicely. This base is about 70 millimeters wider than what it used to be, so that'll give it a lot more stability. This was a bit of a tedious job. I basically stripped off all of the paint and all of the rust on all the panels for the base. Then all the panels are cleaned with acetone and undercoated. This paint is quite cool. You paint it on and it gives a textured tight finish. I have stirred this paint quite well, but the black lines you see in the paint there, I'll talk about those a little bit later. 
I've put a coat of paint on the rolling base that we built and also the original base that came with this bandsaw. And I've used this rust guard hammered finish because there were some rust spots and once I had removed all the rust there was a bit of pitting and stuff so this hammered finish should hide most of that pitting. That's an enamel paint and that's going to take quite a while to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and carry on with the rest of the bandsaw here. So the next step is to pull all of this part away, all the guides and bearings and stuff and at the top here and take it all apart and to clean up all the threads. I don't think there's much wear in there. It looks pretty good. It just needs a bit of a clean up as far as I can tell. The other thing is the bearings in the wheels here feel absolutely great. So there's no play or wobble there. Um, I'm not going to do anything with the bearings. So this bottom wheel and also the top wheel up there um, are really, really good. So pretty much it's just pull everything apart and clean it all up. I noticed one of the bearings at the top here has a whole lot of blade marks in it. And this one looks kind of a bit rusty. It doesn't feel too bad. If I've got new bearings, I'll put new bearings on. Other than that, I just need to check out these blocks in here. They look to be like brass blocks for guiding the blade. So I'll just need to make sure that they're nice and flat and haven't got grooves or anything weird like that in them. So I think I'll take a whole bunch of photos here just to make sure that I can get it all back together in the same way as it is. And then once that's all done, it's just a matter of cleaning up the rest of the top casting here. Then I'll paint it and then we'll put it all back together and we should have a nice running bandsaw after that. I start with removing the top guide and I need to sand this part because it's rusty and it won't come out. A little bit of CRC on there as well. And that finally comes out. And all these other mechanisms are removed. This is the table tilting mechanism. And then I get those on the bench and I strip them all down. There's a little brass washer here and that is to protect the thread. So I need to store that away safely so I can put it back on later on. So these little blocks need to come out. And you can see here that they're not flat. So they need to be all dressed up later. Now the top guide is disassembled. This was a little bit tricky. I couldn't get this right out. And I had to do a bit of thinking about here. And finally, you have to remove that piece. And then I actually had to cut a slot in here. That thread was a little bit tight. And once I got the slot put in there, I was able to unscrew it. And then I was able to get the other piece out by turning it. Again, the blocks come out, and the same thing here. They're not flat, so the blade's been rubbing on these guides. Everything is thoroughly washed up, so all the oil and grease has been removed. And then I start the tedious work of cleaning everything up on the wire wheel. And I tell you, there are a lot of parts that need to be cleaned up on the wire wheel. These are the various parts all cleaned up. So we've got the top guide, uh, the lower guide, the table tilting mechanism, and some other bits and pieces there. Now to protect the parts, I'm going to cold blue them. But some of these parts used to be galvanized, like these thumb screws and this part one at the back there. So what I'm going to do is put those into some vinegar overnight and that will eat off all the galvanizing so that then I'm left with bare metal that I can actually blue. These other pieces, uh, they look like aluminium. I can just paint those up, clean them up, paint them up and the guard as well. Then I need to just have a quick look around to see if I've got some bearings to replace these bearings. And lastly, we just had one part here that the threads weren't too good. 
So I might make a new piece like that up on the lathe. The first thing I do is get all the galvanized parts, put them in this container, and I'm using white vinegar here, and that will remove the galvanizing. The next step is to clean all the other parts in acetone and then use this perma blue to blue all of these parts. Once blued, the parts are put into water to neutralize the reaction. I left the bits in the vinegar for about 24 hours and they came up pretty good. Everything was done apart from one part, which is this one, so it's all good on that side. But there's a bit of galvanizing stool here, so that might have been a bit thicker, so we'll put that back in for another day. Now that the paint's all dry, I'm going to assemble up the new rolling base that we built. Instead of using the original bolts, I've got these bolts here. These were from a dentist chair and they weren't galvanized so I was able to clean them up and blue them so they came out really really nice. So I'm going to use those bolts to assemble the base. That's what I do here and I'm putting all these bolts and nuts on with all the shelves and everything but I'm only doing them up very loosely so that I've got some adjustment which I'll show next. The original base is put onto the new rolling base and we have four bolts that go into the corners there. And when I go to the front this is where I need to adjust it to line up the holes. So that's why I left those other bolts loose. And once we have the base all bolted down to the new base, then I go ahead and tighten up all the bolts that I put in previously. And the base is all ready to go. Now I start cleaning up the bandsaw itself. I remove any flaky paint and any paint that's stuck on really well um, will stay there and I'll just paint over it. I'm using the same paint that I use for the base and I'm applying a thin coat here as it does run very easily. And there is the painted bandsaw. Earlier I mentioned black lines in the paint that I couldn't stir out and I believe it's by design. This is the feature that they give which looks quite good. The next step is to bolt the bandsaw onto the base. I've blued all of the bolts here and I've made up these five millimeter thick washers because the original washers were pretty thin and a bit bent. I've also swapped out the normal nuts for nylock nuts. Everything is bolted down tightly. The next step is to clean up these panels and paint them. I start by using the wire wheel in a angle grinder and that gets the paint and the rust off these panels. Then a spray undercoat is applied to the panels and I finish them off with that hammered finished paint that I used earlier. And the good thing about this paint is these brush marks will just disappear once the paint dries like that. Now there are some other components and I decided to paint these a different colour just for some aesthetics. I hope it works out fine, I'm not really a colour type person. Now that the painting's done I work on the tyres. I'm giving these a bit of a sand, I've learnt this one off YouTube, just to roughen it up so that the glue bonds to the rubber tyre better. Another YouTube tip was to tie the rubber tire on in a couple of places. I use rags here because hard items like clamps can damage the tires. Then it's a matter of holding the wheel down with your foot and pulling the tire onto the wheel. This was easier said than done to be honest. There are probably other easier ways to do it. 
And again, from YouTube, they suggest to roll around the tire a couple of times just to even it out so that you don't have any tight spots. They also suggest that these rubber tires be glued down. So I'm using some ADOS F2 contact glue on the rim and also on the tire. It was a bit of a slow process, but you get there in the end. This is the lower wheel and it's in the machine, so it's a little bit more tricky to get the tire on and to apply that glue. This is the bracket that holds the upper wheel. It also doubles as the blade tensioner and an adjuster for the upper wheel as well. That part slides into the upper part of the bandsaw, just like that. This panel needs to go on. I made up some decent washers in here for these three bolts as well. Next I put the wheel on. The bearing came out when I took it off, so I'm trying to tap it on evenly with the hammer. And then once I get enough thread coming through, I can wind that nut on and just tighten it down. This is the table adjusting mechanism. It has a stud that I put some Loctite on so that it doesn't come out. And then the table bracket goes on there. Again, I've made up a large thick nut as the original one was all bent. The adjuster goes underneath. And that's tightened up on the inside of the bandsaw. And the table adjustment works like that. Off camera, I assembled the lower blade guide and the upper blade guide. This panel goes onto the upper blade guide and I'll put that on later once I've adjusted for the blade that goes through this area. The lower blade guide is fitted to the machine. And also the upper blade guide. The lower and upper guides have been fitted to the machine here. So I think I'm going to cut this video here. There's quite a few other things to do and those will take some time. So they will fit into another video about the same length as this. In the next video, we'll finish off the bandsaw. And what we need to do in that video is install the motor. So that's not a hard job to do, but I want to change the electrical switch that we had. We had this one here. Um, that was at the front, way down the bottom. Not a very good place if you need to quickly turn the bandsaw off. So I'm going to replace that with a zero volt release switch. So that means if there's any power outages when the bandsaw is going, when the power comes back on, the bandsaw won't continue running until you reset the switch. And I want to put that switch on the left of the pillar so it's easy to get to when you're working on the bandsaw. The bandsaw guides here or the guide blocks need to be machined. You can see they're all kind of crooked here. I don't think they were adjusted properly when the previous person had the bandsaw and the blade was rubbing on them and that's why they're all sort of crooked or worn. So I'll put those in the mill and I'll clean them all up and then I'll adjust them correctly when we put the blade on. And I bought a couple of brand new blades here. To put the blade on, there's a bit of a process to go through and that's another reason why I wanna do another video. So that'll take a bit of time, but I'll show you how to correctly install the blade and to get everything adjusted properly so that the bandsaw runs nice and true. Lastly, we have the table here. So this needs a bit of a clean up. As you can see, there's a lot of surface rust on it. And I also want to make a dust extraction part so that it can go around the blade directly under this table. And that will be connected to 
a vacuum cleaner and that is one of the best ways to get dust extracted away when using the bandsaw. So as you can see the bandsaw is mostly done but there are quite a few other jobs to do so I'll put those into the next video. I hope everyone has a great day and once again thanks for watching.